Welcome back to Tricks Fix. Today we're talking about how to trick more often. Shout out Zachary Haley from Facebook who's been messaging me. Um, he's been talking about how he wants to train um, like a crazy, crazy amount, um, like at least every day, at a couple hours a day. He said five hours a day. Um, and I'm just gonna start the video by saying um, that when I say that I train for like up to four hours a day, I'm not tricking for four hours straight. And I'm not, um, like, when you go to, like, a three-hour session, you go, you trick probably every five minutes. So actual tricking time is probably much lower than um, the session time. And when I say that I'm sessioning for four hours, I'm, like, obviously not. I There are times where I'm not moving or I, I'm at the session and I take 10 minutes to foam roll and go back to the session, those types of things. So... When I say that I'm training for a really long time, it may, you may have higher expectations than, like I may have not been specific about how often I'm training. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you don't expect your body to be able to trick for five hours nonstop. Um, just know that that probably is not gonna happen. Um, one way to do this is to break up your sessions morning and night, but I'm gonna get into more specifics on how to be able to train longer and more often um, more specifically every day um, and it's just gonna matter how long you can trick for the for in one day like how many hours in one day you can trick for that just depends on how you're feeling that day so we're gonna go more into this. five categories that I've broken tricking up into will help you be able to trick every single day um, by putting stress on different parts of your body throughout the week so that you're not over training in one specific area that's gonna be the key to training for the entire week and not having to take breaks. Obviously, some days you go too hard um, consecutively and you do need to take a day off and that's fine. Um, the way that things are going right now for me, I'm not used to being able to train power so consistently because I haven't had access to a spring floor. So now that I'm able to train power, I'm pretty much training power, I'm trying to do it three times a week. I start my first session of the week off with high power, then I make sure that I do like a lighter session in the middle, then I go back to power, then I usually take a day off and then do power again, and then I have two days off, and then I start my week over. Um, that's kind of what it's gonna look like, but that just because there are days between the power days doesn't mean I'm taking days off of tricking. So let's dive into those categories. I've got kicks, I've got power, transitions, weird tricks, and single tricks. So we'll just go in order. First one is kicks. Um, how do you train kicks? One big problem that I see people doing is at the sessions, they go and they just, they trick every time at the session instead of training. And I think there's a big difference. So tricking would be, oh, I'm gonna work on kicks today. So let me do cheat nine, cheat nine, cheat 10, snapu, okay? And then I'm gonna keep working kicks, so I'm gonna go cheat nine, cheat nine hyper, B twist, tack, full, swing, dub, round, okay? Because you're doing kicks, so you wanna end with the dub round. And you just keep doing that, but what you're really doing is you're training power combos. You're not training power, or I'm not, you're not training kicks. You're doing kicks, but you need to train the kicks separate from comboing and you need to do it separate from power because otherwise your kicks will not get as clean as they can. And you're gonna get, you're basically wasting your power session. Um, you can use that at your power session because what happens in a power session, you're at 100% and you can hit your biggest tricks, and as the session dies down, you can hit combos like that very easily because you're in a power mode. So those, so using your kick day for a power day is a mistake. Um, I just had a session last night, and what I ended up doing is I was drilling, uh, I was drilling kicks, and I didn't end any of my combos. So basically I was just running through combos, and I was doing stuff like cheat nine, cheat nine hyper, 
over and over and like just trying to make it sharper and sharper and I did a bunch of cheat tens out of every setup I could think of and I don't like ending combos with cheat tens so I wouldn't even call them combos when I was doing them um I was basically just running through it and you know when you hit something like big so like you do cheat nine cheat nine hyper wrap nine vanish ten you really want to finish it but then what ends up happening is if you finish it you get in this mentality where it's like oh I finished it like that's awesome now I'm like gonna work on other things but then you don't get the reps in so if you finish your combos consistently first of all you're wasting your power session and second of all you're not getting the reps in so because you're gonna get tired out or you're just gonna go away from it it's like that it's like the idea of like you do a double back once and you never have to do it again because you have a video of it that's silly you want stuff consistent so you can keep going up as scary as stuff like that is you want it consistent because it gets easy and then the stuff that is beyond that is attainable you can't skip the step if you do it one time you're skipping steps if you think you have it next section is the power section um obviously i kind of already went over this um just try to do three uh three sessions in the week for power um my power sessions usually are like only i mean obviously they're three hours long but my power tricks can only take up the first hour window of my uh, training session of a, like a usually a three hour and then obviously I'm also trampolining on top of this so when I talk about doing power sessions um, you can totally break up your power sessions to be training power on tramp because you can't just get your air awareness um, in your power tricks from training on ground alone so say you're doing say you want to do car full in you can't just go to the session and just start spamming car full in if you haven't trained it on tramp yet you should have you can and the great thing about the tramp is um you can just really feel how your body takes to it i can like i can train power if i'm on tramp if i'm really sore still for the most part as long as it's not like a specific body part like my left ankle i can't train swings on tramp if like my calf is extremely sore so things like that but you can train like two-legged stuff pretty much all the time on tramp um and that's, that's all I use the tramp for is power stuff. I don't really use it for techie stuff unless it's like like helicoptero like in a flip or like maybe um, a box cutter or like a double full scissor or something along those lines. Um, but that's still power, that's still power based. So um, that's, that's the best way to get as much training as possible is use the trampoline um, so that you can train your power more because obviously the power is what makes you feel like you're leveling up is getting those power tricks and then the higher your power tricks are the easier your the, the rest of those categories are going to be for you next one is transitions so this is going to be a pretty large section um i've broken transitions up uh quite a bit so the way transitions work i believe you sh it, it would be best if you scatter it across your week so don't take a, a whole session to work on transitions unless you're very sore or you want to get really good at a specific transition I have been taking sessions entire sessions and working only on megas and front swings um, that was mostly when I could only train on grass so it worked really well but now that I can train on spring floor what's happening is I can do my power session um, and so say say I've got the three sessions a week okay for now just I do do more than that but say for example I've got three power sessions and that's it and then I but I still want to train the transitions what's gonna happen is I use that first hour for power and then the last um, bit of the session I can make combos with front swings and megas or just train the front swing and mega because you're too tired but you're not really sore yet or a great thing about the transitions is you don't they're not really power based they're very technical so like doing megas and front swings and um the vanishes and stuff and just working on vanishing on different things and like you don't even have to do it like super well or like super clean when you're training these things if you can do them when you're sore when you do them when you're not sore it's gonna look much much better so don't hate on your own tricks be willing to look bad um while you're training sore that's a big thing that's how you can get extra training in um, is by being willing to look bad while you're training so that otherwise you just stop training you know what I mean because you think it doesn't look good or whatever it's still helping you so make sure you use it um, this is the list of the transitions that I wrote down um, it, it obviously so this is really cool too is um, say you're so here, here's all the transitions quick we got swings megas 
and you can front swing or vanish for Mega, so that's two and one. And then you can semi, you can vanish regular, like G9 vanish or cork vanish or, you know, double full vanish, those types of things. Um, you can do pops, so double cork pop dub or anything like that. And then obviously you can dumb these down as much possible, like G switch pop full, G switch pop flash. Um, like just train the transition if you're on a sword or whatever. Um, you can do skips. So we were doing a bunch of skips last night. Um, so like B twist, swing, and then you'd half turn and skip snapu. Um, if you guys need tutorials on any of these, feel free to comment that and I can go more in depth at those. Um, and then hypers, so like GMSs, um, or you can do like cart full hyper cart, um, those types of things, uh, anything that's in those zones. Um, so what's really cool about having this giant list of transitions is, say for example, on your power day, you were training G-Switch, for me it would be G-Switch triple cork. What ended up happening is my left leg was extremely sore, and so last night I worked on tackfuls, I learned rap dub, I learned all these moves I haven't really touched on because my right leg was doing really good because I had just been training the crap out of my left. Um, and it's really good because it kind of gets you your balance back. It gets you um, balanced out, gets your um, opposite sides nice and strong so that you're not just preferring one side because if you just train swings and then you just take days off till you're healed and then keep training swings you will notice a muscle imbalance and it will probably screw up your back as well um but yeah there's like a lot of things and like most of these transitions are actually um like like the legs assist each other in the transitions unlike swings swings is very just one side base but vanishes megas um the semis they're like and the skips and stuff it's you're using both feet and so it's really easy to do it on low power um especially things like pops those types of things like it's very easy to do it on low power because you're just using both legs and then that's the same thing you don't have to do power based transitions you can just work the transition and get good at it when you're healthy then do the power based transitions and you'll notice a big improvement next session is weird tricks the next section um so things like reverse hours helicopteros um, late nines, um, any weird tricks that you've seen, um, like late TDs or touch ups. So like sailor moons, stuff like that. Um, mostly any trick that you even skipped. So for me, that would be like rap fulls and any type of hyper tricks, um, like coin drops, um, transformer spiders, miss like B twists, um, just any, like, uh, the thing that, uh, Johan does, like the scoot aerial, like new setups, like things that aren't power based, um, but they're just weird. Maybe it's like beginner tricks that you skipped. Um, maybe it's just tricks that you haven't practiced, like the helicoptero that is very low power based. Um, I learned that trick when I broke my ankle. So obviously I couldn't do any power moves. I couldn't even jump but I learned helicoptero, reverse out, those weird moves. Um, they're a lot of fun, so, um, and it really, really adds your style. And then learning that axis as well gives you like a lot of air awareness in different places that you didn't expect that it would help you out. Like learning reverse out definitely helped me learn mega because reverse out is very similar to gainer scissor, which is basically just gainer mega. So those types of things are gonna help you out. And the last section is single tricks. So this can be anything from the previous sections. Um, so it could be a kick. It could be a singular power move that you're training on tramp or on tumble track. Um, it could be um, the single trick that you want to be a power move but isn't yet. So say you're too sore to train um, standing dub. So you're just training standing full and you're watching your video of your tech and you're figuring it out um, because What's gonna happen, You, even though you're training every day, by doing, by taking a break from the power and by taking a break from spamming combos, um, you're able to heal even if you feel like, it's like even though you're training, it takes way less toll on your body, but you're still progressing and learning. So that's what's super good about having these sections and being willing to train lower level tricks. Um, other single tricks I love to train, um, like my, Single trick day is usually when we go to train in the dojo. Um, we've got like these, they're really hard mats. I can't really do like any power. I can barely do combos because it's like a skinny hallway. So I'm basically just training single tricks. I love doing pop three vanishes, which makes me, leads me into like double seven 
um, turbo vanish and like you can do stuff like 540 switches like this is kind of the weird stuff that doesn't really get touched on like butterfly switch swing like all these there's a bunch of single tricks kind of in the same idea is weird tricks except this is going to be the the single tricks is going to be more about sharpening it up and understanding like smaller muscle control um and then the weird tricks is just obviously the trick itself you don't have to sharpen it up but then if you do the single trick then you can sharpen up those weird tricks like the helis and stuff like that because i learned heli and then i took a separate session to clean it up after i've had it for a while so those are going to be all the sections um let's see if i got anything else to add to that one sec uh yes a couple things i want to add on the end um, to be able to train longer, you obviously need to have good rehab. Um, so things I want to talk about that is going to really, really improve your rehab is, um, this is the only reason that I can train every day or mostly every day is because I wake up in the morning. First thing I do, I go for a run because it loosens my body up like a lot and maybe running's not what is going to work for you but find something that loosens you up in the morning so you're not stiff until the session you want to be loose um and that brings me to my other point when i walk everywhere i go i mean i don't i mean obviously i drive places but i'm saying like when i'm walking whenever i'm walking i don't walk stiff or sore even if i'm stiff or sore i walk as loose as possible and i walk as if i'm like a hundred percent and I, when I walk up the stairs, like I bend my knee fully and I use the muscles to push up. I don't like hang on the railings and like just drag myself around places. Um, because obviously by moving the muscles in, moving the joints in their full mobility and walking as if it's not sore, that gets the lactic acid out. And by moving like you are sore, you're probably um, creating like a subconscious issue like you know people who always say their back sore or their knees are sore even if they're not or like even if it's been way worse but they say it anyway they're just telling themselves that they have bad knees even if they don't and then it just becomes a thing so that's basically if you pretend it's not a problem then it probably won't become a problem it's like we were talking about i was talking about this with some other people it's like it most likely is a ghost pain like your muscles are really tough they can handle some pain when you're tricking not pain but like soreness um so when you're walking around and stuff like that um just go through it go go through the soreness and you'll probably heal a lot quicker because of that so then after i wake up in the morning and loosen up i usually foam roll and stretch um and then i go to work and when i come back from work i foam roll and stretch again and then I take a hot shower before the session and then when I get to the session I use my vibrating foam roller to warm up my muscles then I run before I session and that gets me loose again so basically I'm using these tools to keep my body loose at all times and the looser you are all the time the easier it is to get loose and I'm basically giving my body um, constant triggers as well so it's like when you jog you get loose because I jog then foam roll and stretch so I jog at before the session and I just kind of instantly feel looser and warmer um, like last night so I was extremely sore last night training um, but I I had a really awesome session because I was able to use these tools that I'm telling you about right now and kind of created a session um, that allowed me to train at my fullest even though it's not what I because it's not normally what I train um, but uh, I was uh, Eric was giving me crap about not being able to do a scoop popped up he didn't think I could do it but I had landed on grass um, probably like six months ago but I don't really do that trick and uh, but yeah I had I had landed it really easily on grass so I knew that I could do it and I had done pop fulls recently so I knew it was high enough and strong enough and, but I hadn't done any tricks yet. And he's like, you said you would one shot it. You said you could do that. And I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't think, it's like, like, I don't have to prove anything to you. I don't have to show you what I can do. I'm not training that. I'm way too sore to do it anyway. And then he was like, do it, do it. You have to do it. And I was like, all right, fine. So then I sprinted around the gym like three or four times. And then uh, I did some like high knees. And then I was like, all right. And then I just sent it and I landed. And it was awesome. Because I, but before I did the sprint, there was no way. So keep your body warm and loose is what I'm trying to tell you some more tips on rehab if you feel lack of mobility 
um, because of soreness, um, it is most likely swelling, which means that you need to ice. Ice and take cold showers or cold baths way more often than you think you need to. Um, if you want to train, that is going to, don't and don't do it right before you train either, because that's what I said, is you need to be warm and loose. So you can do it at the beginning of the day, you can do it after your session. Um, doing it in the morning is really good. Uh, it gets you cold, but then when you start getting up and moving, you get loose. So you get that same, you start, your body needs to start heating up, and then the, 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 your body beginning to heat up loosens you up. So doing it in the morning is really good, but don't do it too close to the session because you don't want to be stiff and cold. And then when you are too sore to train tricking, make sure that you train things that aren't necessarily tricking but can help you with tricking. So for me, today, my ankles are really stiff, but I have a session tonight, and then I'm taking a couple days off because I'm going to do a really big trick on Tuesday. Um, but... What I'm gonna do today is I'm going to do a bunch of lunges so that I make sure that I'm getting full mobility in my knees because when you trick, you don't necessarily squat all the way down. So I'm gonna do things like that. Um, if you've heard of primal movement is what it's called. If you've heard of primal movement, I do something very similar. I, I definitely got the idea from that. Um, basically, I'm just doing exercises and it's not to burn out, it's just to retain mobility and active, um, basically dynamic movement in high mobility areas. So doing the splits, but instead of going as low as I can, I go just before as low as I can and then move my legs while I'm in that stretch. Or I just kind of roll around on the ground doing handstands and full mobility and just stretching and using the muscles to move my own body instead of using outside objects to move my own body because strat static stretching makes me more flexible but it doesn't feel good and it actually makes me stiffen up. So being warm and actively moving and doing dynamic stretches really gets the lactic acid out and really gets me feeling warm and like I can do power even though my muscles are tired they're not sore anymore there is a big difference and you have to learn it and the last key to becoming a consistent tricker throughout the week constantly hitting the sessions constantly not missing any sessions taking as few rest days as possible is learning what your body feels like and knowing what it means I can't tell you because it's different for everybody and the words I would use to describe the way that my body feels when it is a certain thing is just gonna be different than the way you do so I can kind of, if you want me to then go ahead and message me and you can explain kind of what you're going through and I can tell you what I would do if it was me but I can't guarantee that it would work but Basically, just learn what swelling feels like so you know when to ice. Learn when soreness feels like so you know when to run or do mobility exercises. Know what tightness feels like so you know when to do stratic stretching. And know when you need a hot shower versus a cold shower. All those types of things. And it's not like I know it like instantly. It's like I just t like tried trial and error and what works the most I figured out what feelings mean what by what the cure does so like for example my quads are super sore so that would mean that foam rolling them would be the best for me because it worked before I'm not telling you that it would work because of what it feels like it's just I know that it worked for me before that doesn't mean it's gonna work this time maybe stretching it would be better but that's why I just do as much as I can not just one thing I like do three or four to guarantee that one of them should help it out and when you're doing the exercises don't don't do it to burnout unless you're trying to gain muscle um, some people that have been talking to me about this I I'm I know I'm a big muscular guy but there are a lot of trickers who are not muscular at all and it really scares me seeing them try to do really high power moves um, like if you don't feel comfortable jumping off like a 10 foot drop and landing in like a strong squat position, you probably shouldn't be doing like then dubs would probably be really difficult for you. So um, compare it. You, you have to realize that the power behind 
a lot of these tricks is tremendous. So you need to be able to handle that weight and pressure and tricking doesn't necessarily make you stronger, but it keeps you strong and then keeps your makes your smaller muscles stronger, like your stabilization muscles. But you need a really strong base for that to start working. So you do need to work out separately and add muscle and you should put a day or two aside to do that if you were are having trouble getting the power to do certain moves. When you notice that power is stopping you instead of tech, then you need to get stronger. Um, veered off track a little bit. I'm gonna put timestamps in there to help you guys out. And make sure that you DM me on Instagram at Crispy Tricks if you have any other questions or you have suggestions for the next video. Um, yeah, hope that helped you.